Let's get started with data cleaning. In this video, we are going to explore the following scenarios. First of all, we start, and this is what we are doing in this lecture, to work with large data sets. And then afterwards, we also have a look at how we can do this in a bit of a more easy way when we are working with smaller data sets. But before we are doing this, I have a very important note. It's very important that you do not give ChatGPT any data that may violate intellectual property rights. So ChatGPT may not have sufficient protection for this intellectual property data. So here, be very careful and just be responsible with what you are inputting into ChatGPT to just be sure that this data is safe to share. So with that in mind, let's jump in. And first, we have to note that ChatGPT can help you clean data in many different ways. This is depending on the size of our data set. We want to talk about first how we can clean data that is large data sets. So here we usually work with the data in our systems, like for example, in our database management system or maybe in Python directly. If we are doing this, ChatGPT can help you to create the code to clean up your data. So then we can just use this code and just paste it in our system, for example, in our database management system. But this can also generate, of course, code for R, Python or MySQL that we can, for example, use to clean missing values, remove duplicates or also standardize some formats. For example, we can ask ChatGPT a question like create Python code for a pandas data frame to remove rows of data that contain null values. And then we see that quickly JetGPT will generate Python code that we can use to clean some data, for example, remove some rows. And we see that this has created also some sample data. And of course, we could just apply this then also to our own data. So here we would just define what data we want to apply this on, and this would then be applied on our data. And also you see that this was a very simple example. And what I also really like is that JetGPT even uses some comments to make the code itself more understandable. And then also we have some explanations about this code. Also, we can just directly copy this code from here. So we can use that directly in Python, for example. Let's now have a look at another example for MySQL. In this case, we want to use the prompt create MySQL code that capitalizes the first letter of each word in first name and last name columns for table customers. This is what we get. And here we see that there is the code and also again the explanation. First of all, I'm a bit surprised about this concat, that, but then when I have a look at this code, it actually makes sense. So it just concatenates the upper function with the lower function. And in the upper function, it just uses the first character and then concatenates this with the rest of this string. So you see this should work. It looks all that it makes sense. And also we have this explanation. So in here we see that this actually used the update. And this is maybe not what we want because maybe we would first like to test things before we are actually updating the data. So therefore I'm telling ChatGPT, please don't use update, but just a select so I can test and query the, let's just write test the results. And then we see instead of update, we just get in this case select. Even though actually the code has been changed, we can still now see if this actually works and if this actually makes sense. 
So let's quickly also ask JetGPT to now generate some sample data because we now would like to just open up MySQL Workbench. And if you want, you can also just very easily download this. If you are going to the site, dev.mysql.com slash download slash mysql. You can select your operating system and then just download this installation file. This is the free community version of mysql workbench. And if you want, you can just follow along with me. You can just download this installation file and then also just follow through the very simple installation guide. And afterwards, we can open up MySQL Workbench. And in here, I'm going to open the local instance. I have already given a password in here. And now I want to, first of all, create some sample data. But again, I don't need to do this myself. It would be not very complicated. I would have to create a table and insert some data, but it would be again a bit tedious. So let's just ask JetGPT to do this. Please also generate some sample data to test this query. And even JetGPT has directly inserted also this query so we can test our results. Let's therefore just copy this code and I will see if I execute this, this probably won't work because in my case, I haven't selected a database. Therefore, I will also just go ahead and create a database. So this is very simple. I'm just doing this myself. Create database and let's just call it test db and then let's also use test db to create this table and then we want to execute all of this code and we see this is not working i don't get correct results so glad i was testing this this can sometimes happen and therefore we need to ask ChatGPT to please correct the code the code for capitalizing and let me just copy this again the first letter of each word capitalizing was not correct please correct it and then this result will change and i think now it should work so we see this makes more sense this is a little bit more straightforward also in my opinion. And therefore, let's now just again copy this code from here. And now let's just use uh, this code and execute this result. And now we see indeed it works. So now we have just used again concatenate and also ucase and lower to just connect those strings and make them in uppercase and lowercase. So this was how we can use ChatGPT to generate some code for cleaning data. In the next lecture, we learn how we can use ChatGPT for smaller data sets where it can be a little bit easier. That's what we are doing in the next lecture. Mm -hmm.